Hey gang, Giselle here, and I want to show you today how to prep a metal piece. I found these cute little um, coffee pots with these little removable lids. So if I had um, a little screw in here or something, I would just take that screw out with like a screwdriver. So any of the pieces that I can take off, I want to take that, them off. I got this for 50 cents, so I'm pretty excited about using it. This one is actually stainless steel, but I could also use um, any of the plated silver, or I could do it on regular silver or whatever. This is just a little scraper that you can get at the market. I got this one from Pampered Chef, and I love it. I use it for scraping my pans. But what I'm doing is I'm just trying to take off um, any of the adhesive or any of the stuff that I have on top of there. And, of course, this one's got like a jillion stickers on it so I take it off first but of course then it's always going to leave some sort of adhesive on top of it so you're going to have to remove that adhesive I'm just going to peel it off of this other guy hopefully this one and it's little 50 cent mark are going to be easy um, to get cleaned off so first thing you got to do is remove those little stickers so just doing this in my sink at home all right so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of um, adhesive remover. So you can use, this one is, I'm learning how to use a camera, uh, Elmer's Sticky Out. You can use Goo Gone. Um, you could use nail polish remover if it is the acetone kind. And I'm just going to take it and open it up. Of course, I'm trying to keep children out of it, make it really difficult for me. So I'm just going to pour a little on the tops of this wherever my adhesive is for just a minute and then just let it sit and after it's done sitting I'm going to just take my handy little thing again and I'm going to scrape that out if you have like a little green scrubby pad or you can use some steel wool something like that that will help take that off as well you got to be really careful about scratching the surface this seems to take it off um, fairly easy So any kind of adhesive remover will work fairly well for this. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna get a scrubby pad so that I can wash those. Give me just a second. Okay, I'm back with a scrubby pad. My dog was kind of whining a little bit, so I had to make sure that she was okay. I'm just gonna take the little scrubby pad, just a regular SOS pad or whatever, and I'm just gonna make sure that all of the adhesive and stickers are off. Look really closely at it. Make sure that you don't have something on there. Sometimes you think that it's off, but then when you go and get your primer and your paint and everything else on it, and it looks absolutely gorgeous, you find out, oh wait, I didn't get everything off. So I'll press it kind of hard make sure that you don't have any marks on there this is also going to take off that adhesive remover has like a petroleum base or some kind of oil base to it too so we want to make sure that we're going to get that all um, cleaned off as far as the oil goes all right that part's done so you need to decide if you're going to be using these functionally or not so if I'm painting the outside, I'm actually able to keep the inside nice and clean and not really worry about that. So when I'm spraying, I want to make sure that that's covered. In this case, I don't think these are going to be functional. I think they're just going to be adorable and I'm going to use them to store pens and cute brushes and fun stuff like that. So I'm not going to be too concerned about that. If you are going to use them for that, we'll talk about when we get to the spraying um, part of it and then we'll see what we need to do to prepare that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of Dawn dishwashing detergent. I know this is like the cheap brand or whatever, and that's fine too. As long as it's a like grease cutter, I'm going to take it and I'm going to wipe it everywhere to make sure that I've got everything off. So just like you're washing a regular dish. I mean, don't be crazy. You're going to wash the inside too. Wipe the outside down really good. Make sure that you're getting everything off of it all right those look really good so then I'm going to take and I'm just going to dry them off really good I just use flour sack towels I want to use something that doesn't have a lot of lint to it hang on a sec okay sorry about that I had a phone call I have to decide if I'm going to edit that out or not or let you know what my real life is like on a day to day basis all right, so we washed this off really good. I dried the other one up. I'm just using like a little 
flour sack towel to make sure that I've got everything nice and dry. So what ends up happening um, when you get ready to get your um, color on there and your primer and all that kind of stuff is you touch it. So your natural oils from your hand are going to leave some marks on here. And so the next thing that you want to do, you want to um, wipe this with white vinegar. So notice I said white vinegar and not apple cider or balsamic or any kind of fancy vinegar with, I don't know, tarragon in it or whatever. So I'm just using regular um, white vinegar. I have it by the jug. And I'm just going to put it on a paper towel and then I'm going to wipe the surface of the entire piece. So I let it puddle, I let it, you know, get on there or whatever, and I'm not going to dry this off. I'm just going to set it aside on my counter and I'm going to let it air dry on its own. All right, and then I'll take you outside and I'll show you how to do primer. All right, it's a beautiful, beautiful spring day here. I got a little bit of wind, so I've set myself up here um, in my backyard. I've covered everything in plastic back here. I have like a bench that I use. And I've got my little metal pieces inside. I'm going to talk about the type of um, spray that we're going to use here in just a minute. But first I want to kind of show you what I've done to the metal piece here. So I wanted to keep the lid of this or the inside of this functional. So I actually just stuck like a little piece of paper toweling like right inside there. Everything is nice and dry. All the adhesive is off. I have a little box over here that I put um, my stuff inside and I took this one and I flipped it upside down because I don't really care about this one having a lot of the spray that's going to go on it. But I am a little worried. Um, about how I'm going to use it. So I'm just kind of thinking ahead. I'm just going to place those inside my little box right there. You want to make sure that the weather is good. You don't have a lot of wind blowing. I'm going to use the Krylon um, primer for, and it's gray because I think I'm probably going to base coat this in a dark value. So you kind of want to think ahead with that kind of stuff too. Oh my gosh, it's so much crazier doing this outside because you got dogs barking and things happening. But I'm going to try and get through this. Okay, so I'm going to use the gray primer because I'm probably going to base coat this in a darker value color when I get ready to do it. And so you always know there's like that little ball that's inside there. I kind of roll it around circularly to get that ball moving so that any of the stuff that's down at the bottom is going to kind of start moving on its own. And then just shake the heck out of it. And I'm just going to keep shaking it. So I'll come back when it's all shook up. Okay, um, my bottle is all, or my can is all shook up and I'm getting ready to spray. I turned my box to the side so that it had a little bigger area in here um, for me to have my piece. I want to cover the most amount of surface that I can when I'm doing my spraying. So when I get ready to spray, I'm going to do some short little sprays to start out. And you'll see how nicely that already covers pretty quickly. Then I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to sort of sneak my fingers around it so that I get some short little bursts on there. The back of this didn't get any paint, so I'm going to flip that one around. And like I said, short little bursts. And I'm going to continue to do these short little bursts and then let it dry in between the coats. And I'll probably get five or six coats on. I'm trying to do the light misting so that I don't get runs on it. Because if you get runs on it, you're going to end up having to come back and you're going to have to sand, wet sand them down and do some of, the other, some of that other work that I really don't like to do. So I'm just going to be a little bit patient here and work with that. Once I get all of the coats that I want on one side, I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to lightly mist the top. So I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back now and everything looks like it's really nice and dry. It's too, you could tell because everything is a nice matte, has got a nice matte finish on it. I'm going to let these sit out here for probably, um, maybe like a half an hour because the weather is really nice and they actually stink when you have all the spraying and stuff done. So once those are done, I'm going to let them set overnight and then tomorrow I'll show you how we prep them. All right. All right, I'm back and prepared to do some base coating now and getting this prepared for me to paint. And I'm going to use um, just acrylics on it. So whatever paint that you decide that you're going to use, whether it's a gouache or if you're going to use the acrylics or whatever it is that you're using, you want to use a sealer that works well with that paint. So I'm going to use the multi-purpose sealer. 
There's also a paint adhesion medium that you can use with the DecoArt paint that works really well. Um, I'm just going to do it with the sealer. So just like on a wood piece, if you were going to put a sealer down, it's going to give you something that's going to grab on to your primer so that your paint is going to stick over time. So one thing that um, I want you to do, just very lightly shake it, don't want to create a lot of bubbles, but a lot of times people will just take it and they'll use it just plain on the piece. So, And you are welcome to do that. I'm just going to use um, a glaze brush to help me get that on. You could take it and you could just base coat and have that on there. And on the tin pieces, because I already have like a primer coat on there, you would be able to see it. But I'm pretty lazy. So I'm just going to take and mix the two together and it's going to give me, it's going to help me in two ways. So I'm just going to take the bottom of my brush, equal parts, take the bottom of my brush and I'm just going to make that act like a palette knife and give myself a little puddle to work from. And I can continue to add to this as I need to. You can either use a brush like this, and of course the first one's gonna be kind of transparent because that's gonna have, um, the, it's gonna have the sealer in it, but the more coats you do, the better it will be. I like to use sort of a slip slap motion because I wanna have some texture in there. But if you do wanna have a really, really fine um, base coat on there, you're gonna do it with a sponge. So let me get this on and then I will show you how to do that with a sponge. I am mindful of all of the elements of this as I'm working with it, so I want to make sure that everything is coated. So the problem with using a, a brush on this is that you're going to end up having like lines in there because tin is so smooth. So I just kind of go slip slappy back and forth with it. And I get my first coat on with my sealer. I let that dry and then I'm going to put another coat over the top of that, but my next coats, all of them, none of them will have sealer in them. Alright, I'm going to set that aside. So if I was going to do it with a sponge, which I think is like so much easier and a lot smoother, I'm just going to use a ceramic sponge. And again, I'm going to go into my mix. I'm just going to work that paint into it. And it's just kind of like wiping, washing a car, wiping a window whatever see how much faster that is especially like on trays and things where I need to get inside there I can just scrunch up that sponge and I'm not overly concerned because this is such a thin layer on here I'm not really worried about the brush strokes or the stroke of it because it won't show up once I get my next coat on so see how much faster and easier it was to put that on so I'm just going to finish it up let it sit for a minute and let that all dry and then I will get the handle on the, the rest of it with just the single coat on. There you go. Alright, so this is really, this is nice and dry and so to get my second coat on, this was the one that had the sealer in it over on this side. And now I'm just going to go ahead, I can still use my sponge even without washing it out. I just don't want to add more sealer to it when I'm getting ready to do my other coats. So from now on, all the other coats that you apply on here will show up just a little bit better as you're getting those all base coated on. Um, and then once I'm done, I can decide what other areas want different colors. So I base the whole thing pretty solid and then I come back and maybe I'll base my handle in a particular color or I'll do the little spout something different or maybe this top little part over here. Once I decide what my uh, uh, design elements are going to be, that's when I'm going to decide what other colors that I need to put this on. So I hope that this has been helpful for you and that you know how to at least get started on some metal prep and painting on wood on metal pieces. Have a great painting day.